Turn to the heavenlies now as we declare these blessings upon your life as we go into the year and make sure as we declare these blessings, nobody's voice is louder than yours. There will be no confusion in my life this year in the name of Jesus. Open your mouth and decree it. There will be no confusion in my life this year in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. So every power assigned to put me into bitter water this year. In the name of Jesus. If it's assigned to put me into bitter water. Let the power be destroyed. Masikaya bo shendera boko santa. In Jesus' name we pray. So every evil power assigned to monitor my destiny this year. Dry up. 
up in the name of Jesus open your mouth and declare it loud and clear Jesus is here his power is able to deliver to the uttermost in Jesus name we pray please pray this next one with boiling anger every night meeting assigned to frustrate me scatter in the name of Jesus scatter the night meetings it must not approach Aha, aha. Scatter the night meeting in the name of Jesus. Scatter the night meeting. Masikaya Boshendera Bokora Basanda. Aha. In Jesus' name we pray. God is a God of signs and wonders. When the axe head fell into the water, Contrary to the law of gravity, the power of God brought it out. Contrary to the law of gravity too, Jesus ascended into heaven. That's why I know that tonight, every law that must be suspended for you to move forward shall be suspended in the name of Jesus. Amen. Every rule that must be changed for your sake, for your life to move forward, it must be changed in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Listen, beloved. Manasseh and Ephraim, they were brought before Jacob. The rule was that they should lay the right hand on the head of the firstborn. But when it came to the case of Ephraim, the rule was changed to favor Ephraim. He said, My father! Change the rule to favor me. In the name of Jesus. Open your mouth and pray like that. Let the rule be changed. Change the rules. In Jesus' name we pray. Say this the way I'm going to say it. Noise, no. manifestations, manifestations. Roaring, roaring of my enemies. Oh, my enemies. Can I hear the sister saying this? No. Is that the loudest the sisters can say it? No. Mm-hmm. No. Brothers shouting louder than the sisters. Jesus Masekaya bo shentera bo konta Deketenda kaya bo shendera ba E Jesus name we pray Wonderful God we thank you for this wonderful evening and we praise your holy name for bringing us here. We thank you for preserving our lives all through the vulture year of last year up to this year. We give you praise. Accept our thanks in Jesus' name. Tonight, open our understanding. Lay your hands upon our lives. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Shout it loud, hallelujah. Before you sit down, can you shake hands with three persons again and say Happy New Year in Jesus' name? Amen. Let's have a seat. God bless you. Many years back, I stood on this same pulpit and I gave you some information from the Lord concerning those who are members of Mountain of Fire and Miracles Ministry. Part of what was said then, some people may remember, some may not remember. 
Uh, members of the Mountain of Fire and Miracles Ministry are supposed to be the richest Christians around. That was some time ago that was said. For those who were able to key in into what was said at that time, they are all rejoicing now. I'm here again, and I want you to listen to me very carefully, to bring you information as directed by the Lord. I took quite a few complaints to the Lord about our members. And the Lord said, His promise that members of this fellowship will be the richest around is still valid. But He said, There are things that we must teach you, which some of us know, some don't understand, some are struggling to know. And part of the reason why some people are wallowing in abject poverty and they fail at the edge of great financial breakthroughs. Is what we are going to start teaching now. And we are going to teach it in series. And it will be nice for you to make sure you listen to all these series and put it into practice. So I am going to title it. Give us. Get. Keep us. Lose. Give us. Get. Keep us. Lose. Give us. Get. Keep us. Lose. Now to listen very carefully. In Luke chapter 6 verse 38, anyone who is not really ready for outstanding prosperity should not really bother about this message. But for those who have decided that they will never be poor, they should listen very carefully. Luke chapter 6 verse 38. Luke 6 38. The Bible says, give. It is not an advice. It's a command. Give. And the result is that and it shall be given unto you. Everything starts with the give. All other things, they just, they are attachment to the give. Give. And it shall be given unto you. Good measure. Praise down. That is concentrated. And shaking together. And running over shall men, men, fellow men give unto your bosom. For with the measure that we shall measure with her, it shall be measured to you again. The measure which you should give is what shall come to you. Give, the Bible says, and it shall be given unto you. The reverse is also true. Keep, and it shall not be given unto you. There are plenty of people sitting down here tonight that if they have been following these principles they will have been one of the richest people in the whole of this country of Africa. But they listen to the sermon of the, they listen to the, sermon of the devil and now there is trouble. In Acts of Apostles chapter 20 Acts chapter 20 verse 35 Acts 20 35 Acts 20 35 says, I've showed you all things. Acts 20 35. I've showed you all things. How that so laboring ye ought to support the weak and to remember the words of the Lord Jesus. How he said, It is more blessed to give than to receive. Keep that too in your hand. 2 Corinthians chapter 9, look at what it says. 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 7. 2 Corinthians 9, 7 says this. Every man according as he purposeth in his heart. So let him give, not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loveth a cheerful giver. And look at verse 6. But this I say, he which soweth sparingly shall reap also sparingly. And he which soweth bountifully shall reap also bountifully. Give. Get. Keep. Lose. Proverbs chapter 11 verse 24. Proverbs 11 24. Proverbs 11 24 says, 
There is that scattered, yet increaseth. And there is that withholdeth more than his meat, but it tended to poverty. The liberal soul shall be made fat, and he that watereth shall be watered also himself. All those scriptures that I've read, they are only saying one thing give and get, keep and lose. Let me tell you some hard facts now about giving, which you need to ponder upon and understand. Statement number one is that it is the hand that gives that we gather. The hand that gives gathers. So if you are noticing famine and famine and famine around you, check the level of your offering. That's the first thing to check. Two, trying to cheat God is bad economy indeed. When God says bring and you don't bring and you are trying to cheat the Almighty, it's a very, very bad economy. And when God wants to measure what you are giving to him, he measures it by what you have left behind after you have given. It doesn't measure by what you put down, no. It measures by what you have behind after you have given to him. This lesson ran going to one woman seriously one day. She had a dream. She was a very, very stingy person. She doesn't give to God at all. That day she had a dream. In the dream, she saw herself in the church and a plate was placed at the door for people to be dropping their offering. A man came and put 10,000 naira inside the plate. In that revelation, it will appear as if that plate has the power of changing each person's gift to the real value before God. So the man dropped 10,000 naira in the plate. It turned into one naira. And it's, ah. And she said, why? The Lord told her, say this man is giving so that people can say something good about him. A woman now came along. That one dropped 500 naira. Dropped 500 naira there. And that became 100 naira. I said, Lord, what was what, it again? I said, this woman is giving uh, because uh, uh, it's, 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 it's the custom to give. Say, well, well. That's why she put that, not because she wanted to give anything to God. Then a little girl came along and she dropped uh, 50 naira. And the 50 naira became zero, nothing. <sighs> she said, why? No, it's not recorded for this girl. And she said, little girl. Oh, he said, well, the angel said, well, she, she, the, the Lord told her that the, 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 this little girl dropped that 50 naira because she was trying to please her mother, not because she wanted to give it. And so the woman was getting discouraged. She said, ah, this kind of plate, it will be as if all the offering given there, you are not accepting it, Lord. Later, a poor little girl came along and dropped in just 50 naira. It became 50,000. And the Lord said, you see, this person is very poor. But she denied herself to give this money because she loves the Lord. So those who say, well, I want to give, but I am not very buoyant. The truth is that if you cannot give to the Lord when you are poor, you won't do it when you are rich. So trying to cheat God is really, really bad economy. Fact number three is this. There are two powerful marks of a Christian. One is giving and second is forgiving. There are two powerful marks by which you know a Christian. The fourth hard fact about giving is that what you give leaves. Doesn't that? What you give leaves. The fifth fact about giving is that giving is the thermometer of our love for God. Giving is that thermometer. You can sing, darling Jesus, darling Jesus, oh my darling Jesus. And that person you call darling Jesus. I love you so much, darling Jesus. But when it comes to coming to, come to give to him, you treat him as a beggar. 
as if you are giving somebody who gave you a good service in the restaurant a tip. Beloved, this is why many believers are poor. This is why many people who preach holiness, preach all kinds of things, in spite of the holiness preaching, they are still poor because they didn't follow this principle. And this is why you see some Christians who are not that serious with their Christian life, they are not as prayerful as some people are, they are not as holy as some people are, but because they understand the divine principle of giving, and they start giving, and God begins to open doors to them. Fact number six is this. Giving is God's medicine for greed. Giving is God's medicine for greed. If men learn to give, if men are giving, that's a cure for greed. The seventh fact is this. Fact number seven. An offering is faith in action. Any offering you give is you are putting your faith into action. And like I was saying on the cross of night, you pay your tithe, you give your offering. The tithe is, some, is God's own, so you just pay it. It's not, you are not giving him offerings. You, you are paying, you have to pay if you want the windows of heaven open. An offering is faith in action. Eight, giving impresses God because God himself is a giver. The Bible says God so loved the world that he gave. He didn't just sit in heaven and say, I love them, I love them, I love them, and did nothing. He loved them, and then he gave something. Gave his only begotten son. Fact number nine. Your uncommon sowing will create an uncommon harvest for you. When you are really ready for uncommon financial breakthrough, then you do uncommon sowing. Your uncommon sowing will create an uncommon harvest for you. This is a very, very serious matter. And you must understand this principle very, very well. So that it will be clear to your spirit man. It will be very clear and glaring to you what you should do. Ten. Giving is a divine characteristic. And those who do it have been godlike in operation. Giving is a divine characteristic. Those who do it they are being godlike in operation. Fact number 11 is this. God promises to respond to giving. He wow. said, give and it shall be given unto you. Give and get, keep and lose. 12. Your giving is your love in action. That's your love in action. You show that you love the Lord and you put that love now into action. They took a contribution in one church because they wanted to build. There's a poor little girl there. She cried and cried. She said, what do I give now? Then she remembered that they willed a golden ring to her. That's the only thing that their rich ancestor, the great-grandfather great grandfather willed to her. And she kept it to her heart. It was a lot of money, that gold ring. So since she, had, she, had, she didn't have money to give, so she put in the golden ring into the offering box. And they took the offering, they took the offering, they took the offering. By the time they collected the offering, they found that they had enough to do what they wanted to do without the ring. So the pastor now called her and said, uh, sorry, we, are, we have enough money. So you don't have to contribute this expensive ring. You can have it back. She snapped at the pastor in anger. She said, Pastor, I did not give that ring to you. I gave it to God. Give it back to him. Many present day believers will have said thank you very much. And that will have blocked our blessings. That young lady became one of, some of, the, great, one of the greatest women of God. 13. God treasures the giver. God treasures the giver. Once you are a giver, God sees you as a treasure. And there are many, many tragedies, many, many terrible things that will just fly over you. To fly over the person. One day, when we were in Old Jabba Road, one brother was sharing an unfortunate testimony. He had learned his lesson the hard way. Anytime they are giving offering, never gives anything. 
So why should I? Why should I put my money down? He would never give anything. So he prayed, 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 prayed. God gave me a better job than the one he was doing. That job he was made. They, they, won't, they will not pay them till about three months. Meanwhile, what he had in saving, he had used it up for those three months. And at the end of the three months, they gave him a fat salary. Remember this a long time ago, we were talking about 1990. Give him a fat, fat, very fat salary. And he was already rejoicing and planning what to do with it. And he thought he was very clever. He arranged the money inside his stockings and wore his shoes. So that no, there is no way he could lose the money. He took the bus. He really got down from that bus that day. Some area boys just faced him and said, Ah, you have to give us something. He said, I don't have anything. He said, There's nothing here. So you don't have anything? Say, yeah, I don't have anything. It's okay. Do you agree that if we search your pocket and we don't find anything, we, we find something that will take it? Yeah, yes, you can search the pocket. So they searched the first pocket, didn't say anything. They searched the second pocket, didn't say anything. And they were already going to, going to say, Go. I said, ah, look, there is swollen stockings here. So, uh, do, you have, do you have elephant tires? At that level, it was shaking. They cleared his leg from the ground. <laughs> took off his shoes. Money poured down. They took every cobble. He cried on the bo- in the bus stop until his voice went hoarse. So he came to give testimony that those, that those who wanted to copy him should not copy him all. Why did God not protect him? He was not a giver. 14. The treasures you keep in heaven is laid up. The treasures you keep on earth is laid down. The one in heaven is laid up. The one on earth is laid down. Fact number 15. If you are a lazy giver, you will be a lazy receiver. That is the lazy way in which you are giving is the lazy way to it to be returned to you. These are hard facts. Principles that we must understand and follow. 16. There are three kinds of giving. Three kinds of giving. There is what we call grudge giving. Those who hate to give, but they are just giving it grudgingly. Grudge giving. There is duty giving. It's, I ought to give. That's why I'm giving. But there is thanks giving. That is, I want to give, and that's why I am giving. You will have heard plenty of testimonies from the pulpit here of people who say, Well, that day they said we should give towards something. I gave everything I had, and within a few days, a few hours, they receive abundance. These are the principles that we don't practice, and then there is plenty of poverty. Fact number 17 if you want to change what you are getting from heaven, then change what you are giving. If you want to change what you are getting from heaven, you to change what you are giving. It's a fact. 18. You have to sow before you can reap. That's what the Bible is explaining. A lot of people are asking for this breakthrough, that breakthrough, but they don't want to sow anything. How would they reap? Some even are talking to others to give, but they themselves they don't give. 19. Fact number 19. There was never a person in the Bible who gave and did not receive more than he gave. No, there is no example in the word of God. Who gave and never received more than he gave. Again, re-emphasizing the principles that I've been saying. It's givers that get, keepers don't get. That's what I've been saying since. 20. Fact number 20. Nothing that you have not given away that will ever really be yours. You've never given it away. It will never be yours. But when you begin to give, more and more and more will come back. If I stand just here now and I stop this message where it is now and I decide to begin to share my own testimony since I was in school till now, 
and how the Lord has blessed me through the principle of giving. We'll be here till midnight. So try and understand these principles. So that you too can key in into the prophecy of MF that the Lord gave about MFM members that they will be the richest. 21. Hard fact about giving. Whatever you keep to yourself, you eventually lose it. But what you give to the Lord, you keep it forever. Whatsoever you keep to yourself, you lose. But whatsoever you give to the Lord, you keep it forever. Principle and fact number 22. If you sow much, you reap much. If you sow little, you reap little. Sow much, reap much. Sow little, reap little. These are facts of life. And facts of scripture. 23. The more we give of anything to God, the more we shall get back. The more we give of anything to God, the more we get back. As you give out, you get more. 24. Given is therefore through having. Given is then through having. That's why you have something truly. Fact number 25. We are rich only through what we give and poor only through what we refuse and keep. That's number 25. Fact number 26. The dead sea is the dead sea because it continually receives and never gives. The dead sea is the dead sea because it's continually receiving, but it doesn't give anything out. That's why it's dead. They call it dead sea. In the dead sea, no animal is living there. No life. If you go to our sea here, you find fishes, you find sharks, you find serpents, you find whales. But dead sea, nothing. Everything dead. Because it receives, but it never gives. It is the same thing, beloved. When you receive and you never give, you become dead. 27. Given opens uncommon doors. 27. Giving opens uncommon doors. We're in the new year now. And many of us want doors to open to us of their own accord. You want doors to open of their own accords? One thing that will keep open that door is your giving. It will open the doors to you. All those who were mightily blessed in the Bible were men and women who first of all went out of their ways to go and be a blessing to others. If the widow of Sarephath was a stingy woman, when Elijah came and said, well, uh, can you bring me a, a cup of some water? As the woman was going, and a morsel of bread in your hand. Huh? So that's the last one, man of God. We want to eat it and die. So, but I will bring it. And Elijah, Elijah told him the thing will never dry up. Our giving opened uncommon doors. Peter was already planning to go home. He had fished all night and caught nothing. And he was, his, his temper must already be very bad. Very frustrating to walk all night and get nothing. And all of a sudden, somebody came and said, let me borrow your boat. And he gave his boat. He went out of his way to be a blessing. He gave something. And what happened? Uncommon doors were opened unto him. I pray that the Lord will open your understanding in the name of Jesus. 28. Prayer is mentioned 500 times in the New Testament. Faith is mentioned less than 500 times. Given is mentioned over 2,000 times. And out of the 38 parables of Jesus, 16 of them dealt with giving. Giving is therefore a serious heavenly principle. Prayer is mentioned 500 times. Faith is mentioned less than 500 times. Giving is mentioned over 2,000 times. And out of the 38 parables of Jesus, 16 dealt with giving. So giving is therefore a heavenly principle. How many have I told you now? How many? 
29 now. Giving is an act of obedience. An act of obedience. And when you want to obey the Lord, you don't consider your convenience. Because they say, well, I know, yes, Lord, but this is not convenient. It's disobedience. Giving is an act of obedience. It says give. So if you are supposed to give, and you do not give, and because you do not give, the blessing that is supposed to come to your life so that you can be a blessing to others does not arrive, then you will be held responsible in heaven. I want you to understand this very, very well. I read a story that touched my life. They were raising a missionary fund in one church. There was one poor woman, she couldn't give anything. It pained her. But after one week, she now came with a large sum of money. The kind of money that even people who are working would take them almost one year to raise. And she brought the money. And the pastor was surprised. And the pastor said, oh, oh, where did you get this money from? He said, pastor, don't worry. It's for God. Later, the pastor found out what the, the woman did. This woman, who was a free human being, went and sold herself as a slave. And that was the money she brought. A free person became a slave because she wanted to obey God. She wanted to contribute. Giving sacrificially is a principle that can never be put aside for those who want mighty blessings. 30. Giving is an act of worship. An act of worship. In 2 Samuel chapter 24, 2 Samuel chapter 24, verse 24. 2 Samuel 24, verse 24. 2 Samuel 24, 24 says this. And the king said to Alauna, Nay, but I will surely buy it of thee at a price. Neither will I offer burnt offerings unto the Lord my God of that which doth cost me nothing. So David bought the threshing floor and the oxen for 50 shekels of silver. And David built there an altar unto the Lord and offered burnt offerings and peace offerings. So the Lord was entreated for the land and the plague was stayed from Israel. Giving as an act of worship. That man said, take the, take, take the land free of charge. David said, no. I can't give to the Lord what cost me nothing. He paid for it. You see, these Old Testament saints, they understood the principle we're talking about. Which we never, which, which, which we of these days never seem to understand. A lot of people are holding tight to what they should not be holding tight. Many are keeping so much money in their hands while the work of God is suffering. But you see, a day will come. And they will put money in that hand. They cannot even hold it. So they sign the check. You can't sign any check anymore. What we count is what you laid up as a treasure in heaven. 31. Giving is not a contribution. It is an investment. You are making an investment. You may not realize it. But it is an investment you are making. And that investment is for eternity. It's for eternity. I know there are people who are already listening to me tonight. Who will leave this place with a promise? I must do something that is uncommon so that I too can have uncommon breakthroughs. 32. In order to have great opportunities, you must make an uncommon, you must do an uncommon sowing. Plant your money in order to have great opportunities. I want you to understand this very, very, very well so that you can you know where you are going. And you'll be able to understand these eternal principles which never, never change. Never, never, never changes. I come from a very poor home. And my parents didn't have any money to even buy a ticket to go from Lagos to Potakot by here. But the first money I made in my life it looked so big that time. Gathered it together. I took it to the pastor. I said, Daddy, take. He looked at the money. I said, Why, why did you get this? That was the first money I made. He said, Kneel down. I didn't know that the man of God was broke when I gave that money. I didn't know there were people even crying on his neck. I just took the thing there. Brothers and sisters, the prayer he prayed for me 
It was a very serious matter that day. It was as if he was praying deliverance on my head. And I saw the effects. Do an uncommon swing. See what the Lord will do. 33. Your money that you give to God is a seed. Is a seed. That's 33. A seed. A seed is a tiny beginning with a huge future. So, that's why some people say, I plant, I saw this as a seed. I saw that as a seed. That's why some people talk about seed offering. But the mistake most of us make about seed offering is that we give things that don't really hurt us. Give things that does not hurt you. And you say, I, I saw the seed. No, that's not the seed. 34. You cannot outgive God. You cannot outgive God. There's no way you can outgive God. I want you to understand this very well. Because giving to God is like putting your money in the best bank. And God as an economist will entrust larger gifts to those who use the smaller one well. He will entrust larger gifts to you. 35. One great reason for Christian poverty is stinginess towards God. Stinginess towards God. Stinginess towards God. God withholds from us when we withhold from him. That's the truth. 36. Giving is God's way of raising men. It's God's way of raising men. When you give towards the things of God, somebody goes now to go and preach somewhere else with that contribution and things will begin to happen. We've declared this year, for example, year of evangelism. Somebody just said, okay, I want to print two million tracks. I want to print three million tracks. You never know what one single track can do in a person's life. 37. Giving should be done as you will do it. If Jesus Christ is the usher standing at your front, that's how you should do it. As if Jesus is the one who will come and do it. Point number 38. He who gives quickly gives twice. Somebody who gives very quickly. When they say give, you quickly do it. You don't start thinking and meditating and, and roaming around with your heart and calculating and calculating. You have given twice. Those of you who understand a little bit about clothes and dresses, you might have heard the name of one man called Douglas. Douglas was one of the best shoemakers in the world. But how did he start? He was at a service like this. And they took an offering for something. He had only one dollar. Just one. And what did he do? He broke it into two. Contributed half of it. Kept 50 cents in his pocket. Kept the half in his pocket. And then he got home. And he got a letter of interview. He has never, he's been looking for a job. He didn't find one. He got a letter of interview to somewhere to go and uh, start a job. And the cost of train transportation to go to that interview was one dollar. He had only 50 cents left. Now, just half. Ah, he began to think. And the devil began to say, you see now, if you didn't contribute that thing, you will have money to go for your interview now. So the man asked the devil to shut up. So he took the train halfway. Because that's how far the money could take him. And he decided to trek the rest to the town. And that was the beginning of his breakthrough. Immediately he got down from the middle place. As he was striking to the next town, he saw a notice board that they needed his, his expertise. He went there. And what they started paying him there was double what he would have gotten if he had one dollar to go to town. So if he didn't contribute that money, he will have his one dollar, he will go to town, and he will be paid at a job where he will have gotten five times more salary. He will lose the job where he's supposed to be paid five times more. But because he just paid half, by the time he got halfway, he saw where we give him more. 39. And this is very sad. Only 15% of the members of an average church carry the load of the church, the financial load of the church. Only 15% of the members of an, of an average church carry the financial load of the church. Whereas all of us are meant to be carrying the load. Sometimes, beloved, when we have a major program like anointing service, power must change hands, 
it takes almost one week to begin to stretch and spread out 10, 10 naira, 5, 5 naira, 20 naira. That people have squeezed until they have become like stone. Some will even be smelling. When people like us see this kind of thing, we say, what a pity. These people don't understand the principles of heaven. I remember that American fellow who was at a Christian conference and people were contributing to something. They wanted to build a Bible college. He came forward and took the microphone. He said, brethren, I'm a giver by the grace of God. I know God will bless all of us. But I don't want to get all the blessing. So I want to give you an opportunity. He said, please, I beg you to contribute. He said, because whatever you contribute, I will double it. He was begging them, please contribute. I will double it. That fellow became one of the richest men on this globe. Number 40. We all pay tithes. Either to God or to Pharaoh. So if you don't pay your tithe to God, things like adversity, unemployment, will begin to take these things away. And it's a tragedy. It's tragedy. In the history of the church, that I have read personally, the only church I have read where 100% all members are paying tithes. All the members of that church, they were lepers. They were all paying tithes. Beloved, I want you to make up your mind as we enter into this 2007. As many as I say, I don't, I don't have much, I don't have much. If you are not generous when you are poor, you will never be if you became rich. And God sees your heart. He knows that this thing you are asking for, if it gets to your hand, you will not serve him with it. So he is not willing to entrust his riches unto you. Because he said, he is faithful in little, is faithful in much. If we claim that we belong to God, it is logical that everything we have belongs to him. So when we are giving to God, all we are doing is that we are just taking our hands off what belongs to him. Some of us are cheating God, we are calling it economy. When you take what God does not want you to have, he will take what you are supposed to have. If he says, give me 10%, and you don't give him the 10%, he will take the 100%. And you say, but my salary is small. That's why you should even pay more, so that you can sow more seed and get more harvest. So the way you use your money shows what you think of the Lord your God. And those who pay their tithes correctly, they know the blessing God gives. When you fail to do what God wants you to do, then there is only one problem, which is number 41. Now. The problem is that many believers have been caged by the spirit of mammon. We need to receive deliverance from the hand of this spirit. Money has put human beings into the battle that has no end. Money has been the subject of pursuit since men came into the world. Money has turned itself into the greatest idol. Majority have been captured in the school of money worshippers. Many have gone to places they should not have gone to. Many have eaten and swallowed what they should not swallow because of money. Many Nigerians are suffering in strange lands now because of money. Money is a deceiver. Money will give sicknesses that nobody can remove. Money is a Confucianist. Because those who don't have it think they are in trouble. Those who have it too know they are in trouble. Money has deceived many girls into wasting their virginity and wasting their virtue. Money has made people to suck blood in strange places. Money has changed the vision of so many great men of God. Money has sent many innocent souls to, to, to the graveyard. Money has, money has turned so many women to widows. Money has turned many children to orphans. Money has a caging influence, a dominating evil power, a destructive hand. No wonder. Those who never receive deliverance from the hand of mammon cannot really give to God. There is a spirit known as mammon. I want you to understand, beloved, as you are here tonight, your life is more than money. You met money in this world and one day you will leave it behind. The Bible says we brought nothing into this world. And it is certain that we are going to bring nothing out of it. Money should not dispatch you out of this world before your time. As a Christian, money is made for you. You are not made for money. 
It is sad to know that money is gradually destroying the calling of many men of God. And it has destroyed the destiny of so many people. For example, how can somebody kill his wife because of money? How can somebody kill his own mother because of money? How can somebody allow money to put him in direct confrontation with his own destiny? And what most people don't know is that quick money is quick death. But as a Christian, you are supposed to be hardworking, sincere, and get the blessing of the Lord. You cannot order the sun to rise before its time. Christians don't do wrong things to get money. Because you and your generation, you will regret it. And there has never been any peace in the wrong money. Money has a voice. To listen to his voice is to marry a cobra. Money is strong and deceitful. It controls fools and makes them to do all kinds of evil. Money has deceived kings, has confused nations, has converted people to murderers, separated friends and relatives, removed trust from so many lives, sent millions to hellfire. Money has removed shame from the world. So the bottom line, beloved, what you are saying is this. Money that does not come from God is not a blessing. There is a spiritual force behind money. So as a believer then, your key passage is in Romans chapter 12. Romans 12. Romans 12 verse 1. I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewal of your mind, that ye may prove that which is good, an acceptable and perfect will of God. Your consecration to the Lord determines the kind of Christian you are. When you are already a sacrifice on the altar of God, then whatsoever is your possession too is part of the sacrifice. I see that the problem of most Christians is that they are not, they have not really given themselves completely on the altar of sacrifice. And it's a shame and a disgrace that this principle of sacrifice is not clear to many of us. When you give your all on the altar, your talent, your voice, everything you have is on the altar. Your money too automatically is on the altar. Then you will not need this kind of message because you're already on the altar of God. Sacrifices have no power over the priest. They are already dead. We cannot sacrifice money to the Lord and his work if we ourselves were not already a sacrificial lamb on his altar. Matthew chapter 27. There is somebody there who pursued money. Let us see what happened at the end of the day. Matthew chapter 27. 27 verse from verse um, 3. Matthew 27 3. Then Judas, when he had a dream, when he saw that he was condemned, repented himself and brought again the 30 pieces of silver to the chief priests and elders, saying, I have seen in that I have betrayed the innocent blood. And he said, what is that to us? Sit down to that. The money was useless to him now. He discovered it too late. I pray that the Lord will help you to key in to what we are saying today. And those who are already under the grip of mammon. And you have this exaggerated importance about money. If you lose money, it's like you lose human being. Or you are those who are, you just you estimate money. And you are so stingy even to God. That you don't allow him to even open fresh doors onto your life. Then you need, you need to change. So you can key in into God's places. I'd like you to bow down your heads where you are. Bow down your heads where you are. Perhaps you have been stealing from God. Perhaps you have not been faithful with God. Perhaps you have been doing your own thing your own way. And you forgot this principle of God which are unchanging. You have been stealing your tithes. You have not been faithful in your offering giving. You are asking for breakthroughs but the, the seed that you need to sow, you are not sowing. Begin to ask the Lord to forgive you now. So that you can make an amend. Remember that this message is designed by the Almighty to propel you into higher ground and to put to shame every power that wants you to be in the dungeon and it has been. Talk to the Lord yourself now. Tell him you are sorry. If you know you have, been, you have not been faithful concerning this, tell the Lord that you are sorry. Amen. 
rise up on your feet now. The kind of prayers I want you to pray tonight, they are prayers of open heavens on the basis of what you have heard here tonight. But this is not a theoretical message. This is a practical one. No matter what income comes to your hand, no matter how small, God has a part in it that you must never keep to yourself. Whether it's an income, whether it's a salary, whether it's a gift, whatever it is, if you swallow the part of God in it, you will lose. Givers will get. Keepers will lose. I want you to talk to the Lord yourself. Say every principality in the heavens of my prosperity clear away in the name of Jesus open your mouth and talk to the master now the principality in the heavens of my prosperity clear away now In Jesus' name we pray. Say every manipulation of darkness against my wealth scatter in the name of Jesus. Deal with the manipulation of darkness against your wealth. Posakatunda kaya bo shendera bo contendia. Just scatter. In Jesus' name we pray. Thou power of licking pockets. In the name of Jesus. Deal with that power. In Jesus name we pray. As many people as are here tonight. And you, you yourself made a vow before the Lord. Uh, you never kept your vow. It's a very dangerous thing. You better do it very quickly, very early this year. Very quickly this year. Say this again loud and clear. Siren of poverty. Siren of poverty. A sign against my life. Shut up. In the name of Jesus. Open your mouth and declare. Silence the siren. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Let us share the grace in fellowship.